Hi. Hi, how are you? How are you? Good. I'm doing great. Let me just hook up my headphone. There we go. It should go off my phone. So how are you on this beautiful Sunday afternoon? I'm doing good. It's a little wet here, um, but that's kind of October for you. So I figured I would kind of do some creating today and social media stuff and just kind of really honing down on my niche. So yeah, well, good. And when you say it's wet here, where is here? <laughs> I'm just east of Vancouver, BC, Canada. Okay. Canada. Good. So good we we like canadians my mother uh, <laughs> was born in canada she was born in toronto really so yeah i have my ties to canada i am coming i was and now i have to redo it again i was um coming very, very, very close to getting my dual citizenship, and then things got awry before COVID, too. And then um, we never did it again, but um, I am seriously thinking that I should get it just because of everything that's going on in the U.S., yeah, it's probably a good idea. <laughs> yep. You're in Colorado, yep. correct? I'm in Colorado. I am. I am. So, yeah. I've always wanted to come to Colorado. So, maybe one day. Well, maybe one day. So, Terry, how this is going to work is that I'm going to introduce you and introduce your show, and then we're going to take it away and I'll be asking you a couple baseline questions and then we'll make it work and then you can ask me a couple questions if you choose to do so. Sounds great. And I swear I just said your first name Monk. Give me your first name. Tamar. Tamar. That's yes. I put something we're doing when I said Terry and I'm like that's not <laughs> it tomorrow that's not it because when I look at the zoom thing I'm like Terry why do I have the tea stuck in my head tomorrow okay tomorrow that's okay I'm gonna get this right I'm going you to got it right and so welcome to ask when everyone today with me I have tomorrow and I'm gonna let Miss Tamara, take it away and share her story with you guys, and then we're just going to have a natural interview like we always do. Thank you so much, Wynn. I appreciate you having me on the show. So I always like to start off my story with, I had a fantastic childhood, and the reason that I share this is because I fell into addiction and a lot of people have this perception that you have to be, you know, have a traumatic experience or live through abuse of some kind to become an alcoholic or an addict. And, but it was complete opposite for me. You know, I had a parents that loved me. I had a younger brother and I had a really great upbringing. And, you know, we moved a lot because my dad uh, was a baker at one point and then became a filmmaker. And I was always searching then to fit in and to be enough. And so at the age of 14, of course, high school can be really difficult. And, you know, you just want to be cool and part of the cool kids. And I remember getting drunk for the first time. And I love the way it made me feel right. It just I felt like it allowed me to be the person that everybody wanted me to be. You know, I could be funny. Um, I really loved to joke around at that point. I was confident. And so I like to call it, I wrote a book about my story and I like to call that experience. It was like drinking liquid gold. And unfortunately though, I wasn't scared of putting anything into my body after that point. And in my mid twenties, I fell in harder drugs 
And that really led to some dark places. I could have never imagined. And it's still hard for me to look back today and imagine that I was in some of those situations that I was in back then. And of course, because my addiction didn't stop with drugs and alcohol, it also led to food addiction. And I had, because I was drinking about 5,000 calories in alcohol every weekend, I started to gain weight. And of course, I wanted those quick fixes. And so I remember joining Weight Watchers and Weight Watchers is a phenomenal program unless you're somebody like me that loves to manipulate things to meet my needs. And I actually had devised a plan to lose weight as quickly as possible by having a bag of popcorn every morning for breakfast with a Diet Coke. I'd have a bag of popcorn for lunch and another Diet Coke. I would have diet pills on top of that. And when I got home, I would go for an hour walk. And then also I would have seven oven baked French fries and I counted them and mayo if I decided to give up a beer and a veggie patty for dinner. And so that left me with enough points to basically feed my addiction, right? And drink anywhere from eight to 18 beers per night if I so choose to. But of course, you know, after that happened, I lost motivation. I began my journey through yo-yo dieting. I decided to get married because I figured, well, maybe if I get married, it'll fix everything. And it did not. Um, and I remember in 2011, I was sitting on the floor. I had struggled with depression, severe depression and anxiety, and I just wanted to end it all. And I was sitting there holding a bottle of pills and just contemplating why I was on this earth to begin with. And I remember I was sitting beside my dog. I had a little pug. His name was Rudy. And he just kind of looked up at me and gave me that little head tilt that pugs do because they're so adorable. And he kind of was like, what you doing, mama? You know, that's what I felt like he was saying to me. And something in me in that moment just shifted. And I decided I didn't want to die. I didn't want to end my life. And I actually wanted to try and fix my life, right? So that first year, um, I decided to hire a personal trainer because I wanted to, I figured if I fixed what was on the outside, it would heal what was in the inside, which I later found out wasn't true. But I started at that on that journey and little did I know that that trainer that I hired would actually lead me into recovery as well. And so in June of 2012, I actually got sober. And so that kind of started my journey to where I am today. And of course, through that journey, I became complacent because I thought, hey, I'd graduated, I'd gotten sober, I'd lost weight, I was feeling good about myself. And that's when I really started to develop a healthier mindset, which I just wrote my book about. And, you know, I knew that there was something beyond recovery, right? I started my podcast um, late last year, and that led me to actually starting my coaching business because I started surrounding myself with people who gave me the belief that my past was actually one of my biggest gifts and I could use that gift to help other people. And that's how I ended up where I am today. Yeah, okay. Well, congratulations on being sober. I um, I am in that club. My sobriety date was June 23rd. Um, my sobriety, my journey to sobriety started on June 23rd, um, 2019, when I was standing in my garage talking to someone, and I was trying to get them out of my garage enough so I could process to what had just happened to me and they were um, they were in my garage they were picking up something and I'm and I'm standing there and I'm talking to them God comes in my head and says you need to give up the wine and then I'll put you on your next mission. If you give up the wine, I'll put you on your next mission. So, and I um, had been drinking on and off 
since I was 16. Because my mom not only grew up and was born in Canada, she grew up in the Bahamas where there was no legal drinking age, quite frankly. So giving a 16-year-old wine was a thing to do. And basically, I, I again started drinking when I was 23 years old after losing my mom. So basically what happened is um, God took my life from zero to 60 in about two seconds flat. And God also said, you better give up the wine and I will put you on the next shocking and surprising mission. I can't tell you where, you just need to give up the wine. So um, I gave up, I said, in July of um, 2019, I said to a team member, and I said to my stepmom, I'm giving up wine. I'm giving up wine. And they go, okay. And they believe me. And I still have a wine in this house. And my... Um, Still, mom on the occasion still drinks wine, and then, but she knows I won't touch it, and she will ask me, "Are you sure you don't want to have a glass of wine? Are you sure?" And I'm like, "Nope, nope, 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 nope," and so um, that's my story, and God has now put me on the next mission of being a advocate for emotional and abuse emotional and physical abuse survivors because i am one too um and yeah i love that win and i i feel the same way right i feel like this isn't something terrible that happened to me anymore in my life i feel like this is experience and this is a gift i have 20 years of education on addiction and abuse and codependency and now we get to help other people overcome their adversity yeah overcome their adversity and i um i feel great because of it and people to swing it back to what um, were sitting in our, we're sitting in a wall in the pandemic as we recorded this on October 18th, 2020. And I read a stat last night that someone posted in a COVID coronavirus survivors Facebook group, which I, I didn't get COVID, but I was very, very, very close to getting it. But, um, the way it was set up, it, I got a phone call. I said, absolutely not. They got um, tested. Um, the people that were close to me got tested. Turned out that they had it because they hung out with people that had it and then didn't realize they had it. They all got tested. And so, but in the meantime, they called me and said, look, our friends just got tested. We um, we are going to get tested in the morning. We're sorry. And I said, don't worry about it. And so, because I'm at high risk for COVID. But my point being is, um, because COVID is a long-term disability and you, you get, you don't, you just don't get it once, you get it um, as many times as it is fit. And then you have the after effects of a, you had a disability, now you have the after effects. And what, one of the things they were, 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 they were saying is to quit eating junk food for the liver, quit drinking alcohol for the liver, Thank yep. you very much. And then uh, look at your liver as it's 
processing COVID-2, don't add any more stuff to it than, um, than it needs to be processing right now. And so that's what I believe. Absolutely. I agree. It's, I mean, taking alcohol out of the equation, it, it does wonders for you, right? You're always thinking yeah. straighter and yeah. you're at less risk. So yeah, you're at less risk of falling over and me, I tend to fall, <laughs> fall all the nine times out of 10, even when I don't have alcohol in me because I have a neurological condition, CP. So, um, CP, is, and I told my um, sobriety story on my steps to sobriety, by the way, last night. And so I, and um, the person who was interviewing me said, by the way, you have a neurological condition. You already have an uh, impaired brain. You don't need any more. And that's what I thought. I don't need any more. So my point to you tomorrow and my point to my listeners is give up what your vice is while you still have the chance to give it up. Absolutely. I totally agree, Wynn. And so my next question for you tomorrow is if you had a favorite book, what would it be? That's a good question. I have a lot of favorite books, but I would have to say my most favorite book right now is The Gifts of Imperfection by Brene Brown because I always struggled from perfectionism. I wanted to do everything and I wanted to do it perfectly. And when it didn't meet my expectations, I always felt really down on myself and I already had low self-esteem before. Um, so I love how Brene's really vulnerable in that book and it's okay to be imperfect, right? And I, on my own podcast, I love to share my imperfectly perfect journey. And I have to learn that all these things that I go through, these experiences, these challenges, they just make me stronger, right? And I don't have to be perfect. And one of my mentors actually told me, he said, you know what, Tamar, your good could be someone else's great. So always remember that, right? So yeah, I would say The Gifts of Imperfection by Brene Brown. And if your BFF had to write a book about you, what would the title be? Well, it would be a toss up between wow, <laughs> because she's seen me go through a lot. Uh, we've been friends since high school or probably super motivated because, you know, over the last eight years, I got sober in June of 2012. Um, she's seen me completely turn my life around. And now that I've really found my purpose and passion, like you clearly have as well, it's really driven me in life. And I feel like I'm on this mission too, to help empower other people. So yeah, I would say probably super motivated. Super motivated. And as we wrap this interview up, number one, where can people find a book? And of course, where can people find your podcast? So my book can be found on Amazon and it's called Hope Elevated. I also have a link to it on my website, which is www.theroadforward.ca. And the uh, podcast is called The Road to Health. And that's anywhere you listen to podcasts. I have a link on my website as well. Yep, The Road to Health. And I think I, um, I think I have subscribe to that podcast i just haven't listened to it because i listen to so many podcasts <laughs> but i will be listening to it and so do you have any questions for me as we wrap this interview up i do i actually have i am a foodie i love my food um what is your absolute favorite food i have two questions for you oh my absolute favorite Food and people know this and it's a little it's a bad of me um it's my absolute favorite food and when i'm in those moments of um i can't get out it's either it's if i want it to be healthier than my absolute 
favorite food. It's mac and cheese or it's chocolate. It's any type of chocolate, particularly white chocolate, but peanut butter cups and people know it. (laughs) People know it. That's my weakness. And I'm like, give me peanut butter cups. And I'm like, oh, if I had my... If I had my dresses, oh, I. <laughs> <laughs> and and luckily I'm not an educator anymore. As a matter of fact, um, I just gone before I hit recording with you tomorrow. I just hit. I just got off the phone with a dear friend of mine who's back in education because um, of everything that went on this year and. She she's at the um, state in education, and she's like, well, when I work the forty hour day, and it's like, oh, you did, and I I don't envy you. And my point being is, luckily I didn't have a secret drawer in my office, uh, in my educational days where I could hide peanut butter cups because when you are working those. 14 hour days, which most teachers are nowadays, uh, yeah, you kind of got to go for your weakness. So, yeah, peanut butter cups are my weakness. I swear <laughs> that <laughs> peanut butter cups, any covering, as long as I have peanut butter and chocolate, oh, peanut butter cups are my weakness. I'm right there with you. Um, and then my second question, ooh, now I want peanut butter cups. Good thing it's Halloween and we're almost going to get the Halloween candy. So I'm a big believer in finding your purpose and passion, right? And developing your vision in life. I believe that for me, because I've deliv- uh, I've developed a really clear vision of where I want to go in my life, it gets me out of bed every single morning. What gets you out of bed every morning? My... Passion and my um, drive to help others, and they, my passion and drive to help others, slash my positive outlook on life, and it's turned of, it's turned around in my life, like, no tomorrow because when I was at my lowest low um which was back in may and june lowest low was it started in it actually started in april and then when april march may ended in june and um and it's my drive to help others and and needless to say that others have come and helped me in tremendous ways um some a little more than others but people have come and helped me in my lowest lows and they um, I'm truly blessed. I don't take my help for granted. I don't take the situation for granted, although some days having CP is easier than others. But let's face it, but I think my drive and my passion is for to be a voice for the voiceless. I love it. I love it when thank you for answering those. No, you're welcome. And I truly appreciate you guys. I truly appreciate your support. And I will be um, doing a life update in the next couple of weeks that will shock you, shock you guys. Yes, I'm still in my home, but that will not be for much longer we're in the process I am in the process with other people selling my house so um, 
it's gonna be good, but you guys, as I said, you guys will just have to give me space and place as I pack up and move. And those of you who move, you know the space and place I'm talking about. Don't be asking me million questions by a phone. Don't be asking, don't, yeah, when we do the official move, um, the official move is going to take a couple days and I'm going to get all hands on deck, including my own hands on deck. And so it's going to be an interesting move, but uh, I'll keep you guys updated. But those of you who moved, you know what I'm talking about. So just give me space and place, and then we'll um, we'll figure out from there. But I truly appreciate the support, you guys. And check out tomorrow's podcast. Also, two things that you can do for me and tomorrow is leave a five-star review in Apple Podcast or any type of review in Apple Podcast. Because all that helps is it gets eyeballs on podcasts, potentially earballs, and I said earballs, yes, ear as in ears, and so potentially earballs, and then I want you guys to leave a five-star review for tomorrow's book include and my book because my books because that increases the eyeballs on um, Amazon as well. So now we're dealing with two algorithms that need your help. Amazon and Apple Podcast. And that's my PSA about that. Thanks, Wynn. Thank you. No, thank you. And thanks to you guys. Bye, you guys.